In this lesson, we are going to be looking at various types of questions that uses Pythagoras and trigonometry, exam style questions, such as the one here behind me on the board that uses trigonometry, simultaneous equation and algebraic manipulation. So stay tuned for this lesson. So behind me here, um, we have a diagram where we have two right angle triangles. And the question says, find angle X. So you will notice that you've got a triangle on this side where you've been given the two sides. And you've got a triangle on this side where you have to find the angle X and you've been given the nine centimeters. Now, if we look at this triangle only, we can't directly find X because we need to know at least two sides in order to use trigonometry and find X. So we have to get some information using this triangle over here. All right, so we are gonna draw this triangle here separately. So let's do that so we can label it. That's two centimeters here. That's the right angle and this is six centimeters. Now this side here, we're gonna find this using Pythagoras. We've got two sides and we can find the third side. And this side corresponds to this. So once we know this X value here, once we know this, we'll have the two sides and we can use trigonometry to find this X value here. All right, so let's do this. Now, if you remember, Pythagoras um, is labeled A, B, and C, and the hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle here. So that's gonna be C, and that can be A, and that can be B. So let's apply Pythagoras' theorem. So A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So what do we have? We now have A, which is two squared, B is what we're finding, so let's call that x squared. And C, we are given the hypotenuse, so that will be 6 squared. Next, we calculate this, so what do we get from here? We get 4 plus x squared equals 36. We want to have x squared on its own, so we will take the 4 to the other side by subtracting, so therefore 36 take away 4 is 32. Now, to find x, we will square root our answer of 32. Now, because we are going to be using this value over here, you can do one of two things. To keep it accurate, you can keep your answer as root of 32, um, or you can round it to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Try to keep as many decimal places so that you don't lose that accuracy. I'm just going to go grab my calculator and find what that value is. So, to two decimal places, this rounds to 5.66 centimeters. Now, I will take this 5.66 centimeters and I will write it here. So 5.66 centimeters can be written down here. Let's now draw this uh, triangle here and put in our values. So we know that this is now our new side of 5.66 centimeters. Um, this is our right angle there. This is the angle we are finding. This is nine centimeters. Once again, we are going to label our triangle. Unlike the Pythagoras triangle, this would be labeled using Sokotoa. So, Sokotoa uses um, the sides which correspond to this angle. So, this side here is called the adjacent because it's next to the angle. This side here is opposite the angle. And this is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of a triangle. And it's always opposite that right angle there. So, hype. So, what do we use? If we use Sokotoa here, we have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse is using sine. So therefore, we can write sine theta, theta is x here, is equal to opposite, which is um, 5.66 over nine. Now, remember what I said to you earlier, that if you did wanna keep your answer really, really accurate, then you can use root 32 here, um, and that will give you an accurate answer um, more accurate than this one because this has been round, rounded to two decimal places earlier. Right, so we are finding the angle, so therefore inverse sine 5.66 over 9 and x, we can knock that into our calculator, the inverse of sine. And we get 38.9681 dot dot dot. Now, it's an angle, so we can um, round this to an appropriate degree of accuracy. Notice here, if we were to round to one decimal place, um, this will increase that nine to become a 10, having a knock-on effect on this. So overall, we can round to 39 degrees. 
All right, so have a look at this next question. Um, it's a typical question that may appear on a non-calculator paper, higher of course. Um, so you're given that tan x is equal to 0 0.6, find the length b to c. So you want to find the length b to c. You're also given the information that a to b, length a to b here, is 8 centimeters. And you are finding the length b c. Now, what's strange about this question is that x here is given as an unknown. The angle is unknown. So first assumptions may be that you need to find x, but the question specifically says that you need to find the length b c. Have a think about this question, and we'll go over this very shortly. Right, so let's apply the things that we know of trigonometry and Pythagoras. We are dealing with a right angle triangle. We are dealing with something with a side. We are dealing with something with an angle. So therefore, we are going to use trigonometry. So let's label our triangle here. Um, here, this is adjacent to the angle, so adj, and we are told to find the length BC, so therefore, that is the opposite side. And hypotenuse, we can also put that down. Now, the information that was given to us is that tan x is equal to 0.6. As you know from Sokotoa, tan uses opposite and adjacent. And it is opposite and adjacent that we are dealing with. So, let's write this down. Tan x is our angle instead of theta. So, tan x is equal to opposite, which is our BC, divided by adjacent, which is 8. So, we were told earlier that tan x is equal to 0.6. So if we replace the whole thing with 0.6, we have 0.6 is equal to bc over 8. If we rearrange this, the 8 will come over here and multiply. So 8 times 0.6 is equal to bc. And we can do that. Again, remember it's a non-calculator paper, so you can't do this on your calculators. Um, you will use non-calculator techniques. So 8 times 6 is 48, and there is one decimal place here overall, which is here, so we have to give this one decimal place as well. So that will make sure that we get a decimal place between the 4 and the 8, giving us the answer of 4.8 centimeters. So BC is 4.8 centimeters. So we are going to look at this question next. Um, find the height of this building. We have two points here, B and C, which we have been given the angle 28 and 47. Um, they're also called the angle of elevation as well. So you might see that in your exam paper, the angle of elevation, or in your textbook. So we are told that we need to find the height of this building. Now, you can apply the sine rule and the cosine rules here, if you, whichever one applies, um, but I am going to use exclusively Pythagoras and or trigonometry to answer these questions so that you can get stronger with those techniques. So here goes. So the first thing I will do is I will, there's an unknown side here, I'm going to call this x. And there's a reason for that. You're going to see this through the diagrams I'm about to draw. I will draw these diagrams separately. So I have two triangles here in my mind. I have this large triangle here and this smaller triangle there. And both of them are right angle because they are level with the floor and the building here. They make that 90 degrees. I will draw the larger triangle first and I will label it. So this is my B. This is the building here. So let's write the height here. And this is 28 degrees. And I will also do the same with a smaller one. So this is C and this is 47 degrees. And this is X. Now, if this is X here, that applies here, and this is 25, then from all of that, all of that, B all the way here, would be 25 plus X, or X plus 25. And the height for both triangles would be the same because they are referring to the same height here. So these are my two right angle triangles, and I will be now working on those. Right, so let's start the labeling process of our triangles. This is opposite because it's opposite the angle and this is adjacent and the same with this triangle as well this is your opposite side and this is your adjacent side now that i've labeled my triangle what uses opposite and adjacent we know that tan uses opposite and adjacent so for both of my triangles i will draw i will write down rather um, an equation using tan so i have tan x which is 28 or tan theta 28 so tan 28 is equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite here is H, 
over the adjacent, which is 25 plus x. And I will do the same thing here. So tan 47 is equal to opposite, which is h over x. Next, I will solve both of these simultaneously because the h values are the same in both of them. So I will rearrange this and I will rearrange this. So if I start with this one here, h will be equal to x times tan 47. And then on this one, I can do the same. h will be equal to 25 plus x in a bracket. It's very, very important you remember to put this in a bracket. Times by tan 28. So I now have two equations for h, and I can equate them to each other. So therefore, 25 plus x tan 28 is equal to x tan 47. Once again, why can I do this? Because h equals that, h equals that, therefore that equals that. Now the next step is just to um, expand and collect the like terms and make x the subject. So let's expand this first, so 25 tan 28 plus x tan 28 is equal to x tan 47. Now I want x is on one side, so I can either take this onto this side or bring this over here. Um, it's probably easier to just take it to this side, so therefore x tan 47 minus all of that, that's going to go there because it's a positive here, so on the other side it's going to be a minus, so therefore minus x tan 28. And what's left over here is 25 tan 28, this. Now I will factorize the x out, so therefore x bracket tan 47 minus tan 28, and over here 25 tan 28. Next, x will be the subject, so I will now divide this side, uh, this over, I will divide over here, so therefore 25 tan 28 divided by, remember that's coming, both of that is coming down here, so tan 47 minus tan 28. The last part is just to put this into your calculator and find a value for x. I will just now do that. So on my calculator, I got x is equal to 24.5861 dot dot dot. Now, that is my answer for x. I can also round this to an appropriate degree of accuracy, so maybe two decimal places because I will be using x in my equation to find h. So let's make it 24.59, and that's in meters. The easiest way I could do it is basically substitute it into any of these two equations, okay? So let's use the easier one. So if I substitute x here, and then I type all of this into a calculator, I've got exactly what I need, h. So 20, x is equal to, sorry, h is equal to x tan 47, x is 24.59 and tan 47. Once again, put this into your calculator and I get to one decimal place if you round this, 26.4 meters. And that is the height for my building.